Hi, everybody. I was attending a conference a short while ago, and I met this fascinating individual, and I said, I just have to have you on my show for Living Regret Free, because I just thought he was so great and so different. And his name is Colin McLeod. Now, he's an Edinburgh expat, expat, and he's now based in Melbourne, Australia. And he is possibly Australia's most well-traveled Scottish fiddler. As a Celtic fiddle guru, he performs and teaches fiddle music all over Australia and internationally, and is renowned for his passion for inspiring musicians of all skill levels to join in the fun. Last year, he co-founded a new fiddle school on the, and I'm going to murder this, but I'm going to try, the Ardemachen, he can pr pronounce it better than I can, Peninsula in Scotland, and this year he started a new music school in Dorigo in New South Wales, Australia. He's a chartered accountant who inspires businesses with both his musical and number skills, and this translates to creativity with discipline. Welcome, Colin. Thank you very much, Gail. Thank you. Lovely to be on your show. Oh, well, we just are delighted to have you. So I have to ask you, um, when did you start playing Celtic fiddle? Well, um, if I told you, it was actually probably about the age of seven. And, well, in fact, it was the age of seven. And uh, a music teacher came into a class of primary school kids and asked, who wants to play the violin? And I've really not looked back since then. And, you know, music teacher sitting behind the piano, and I remember the piano keys being played and um, singing, you know, being asked to sing a song, well, being asked to sing a few notes and also, uh, you know, uh, clap out a rhythm. And I, I've honestly never looked back. Well, that's wonderful. I mean... It has definitely brought you joy, and it certainly must bring your audience's joy. But I know one of the questions that I have is, what's the difference between a fiddle and a violin? Well, um, a fiddle and a violin are actually both the same instrument, and I think the difference is in the genre of music. For example, violin might sort of be for the classical genre, like um, of classical violin, uh, you know, the term, and where sort of the other musical genres like bluegrass, Celtic, or jazz, the violin might might be called a fiddle. Interesting. Okay, so, um, well, I like both. I, I happen to like uh, bluegrass, and I happen to like classical. I was trained in classical. And when wow. I... Yes. <laughs> And when I'm uh, when I'm on the road in a car, renting a car, I always try to find the classical stations. But if I can't get that, then I go to something else. But um, playing a Celtic fiddle uh, and music, why is it so important to you? I mean, you're a, you're an accountant. You're a chartered accountant. Uh, they're so different. Um, well, I moved from Scotland to Australia back in 2004. And um, the music sort of helped me trans transfer from move from one country to another, and it's really it's really been a source of inspiration and energy. And if I told you that um, it's also helped me to establish the philosophy and to to quote Thomas Edison, that genius is one percent inspiration and ninety nine percent perspiration, and that's all I remember from chemistry at school. I used to sit in the classroom and no truly and we had um the, across the top of the wooden part of the blackboard was genius is one percent inspiration and 99 percent perspiration and you know when you're playing the violin or you might be some I, I might be somewhere it might be with friends or it might be um perhaps at a concert playing at a concert um you know there is there is a bit of there is a bit of inspiration just to sort of be in the moment and play so that people are enjoying themselves. They've got something special for the, the there and now. Well, you know, music is very soothing. I've always, in fact, I, I started uh, playing the piano when I was three. They thought I composed this uh, song on the piano that I could never remember now. 
and they thought I was this musical genius, but my problem was I could never sit still. So they sat me down at three, and they sat me down at four, and finally at five, I sat there long enough to start, you know, playing the piano and taking some lessons. But how do you manage accounting and music? How do you do, I mean, first of all, why did you move to Australia? That's question number one. And then question number two is, are you working in Australia as an accountant as well as doing your music? Um, yes. So I, I, I moved to Australia um, through friends. Uh, friends said, oh, um, come and visit us in Australia. And they said it over probably a period of about 18 months. So I just decided to go. <laughs> and I've never looked back. And um, yes, I'm still working in Australia as an accountant. And um, you're asking about how how do I manage the to combine the accounting and music? And I think it's really through a respect of relationships and quite a bit of background planning. And um, the, it's it's almost like the peaks and troughs of. Um, if if you think of a sound wave, you know the peaks and the troughs. This it, you've got the certain parts that relate to accounting, certain parts. So I do it all really mostly on a timing basis. In that um, music sort of fills a certain part of a month, and accounting fills another. So from a time point of view, that's really um, where the management comes in. And I've just I actually brought accounting and music together under the umbrella of uh, creativity for growth. So, because I think, you know, to be a whole person, to to have music as part of one's life is just such wonderful, wonderful uh, thing to have and be part I of. I totally agree with you. I mean, I think uh, almost like um, I think it's important for kids to have pets growing up, you know, to give them responsibility and show them love and everything. I think it's important for them to have music in their life as well. So um, whether it's it's uh, an instrument or whether it's singing or whatever it happens to be. But um, what, what have been some of the most magical life moments where you've been able to touch people, you know, through music? I mean, have there been experiences in your life where they, they just, I mean, things happen that you you never expected. Um, yes, uh, one one was um, hearing uh, a person sing who had not sung for a long, long time, and um, it was uh, the tune was actually the song was actually a Scottish soldier, which is uh, an old Scottish song, but playing that and um, it really touched my heart, and. Um, one of one of my favourite favourite uh, moments is perhaps being somewhere, and you know, it's sort of really quiet in the room, and it's you know, it's asking, is it anyone's birthday? And somebody might say, or perhaps a parent might say, oh, it's such and such as birthday. Well, could we practice? Um, could we do happy birthday and? Um, when we caught up in San Diego, um, there was such an instance at um, one of the restaurants, and this uh, this mother had mentioned that it was her son's birthday, and there was a special gathering of the family, and it was just so nice to be able to play Happy Birthday for them. And one one of the other things is being able to play a piece of music someone has requested in the moment, um, so that we're, we're we're all there together and we're all smiling. Well, you know, so you you will be half fiddle, will travel, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I, I, the, the the violin goes around the world, and um, you never know. Um, you know, I, I think uh, sometimes travel is sort of based around experiences and memories as well. And um, with the violin or with Celtic fiddle, it's possible to to have fun and to join in a Celtic music session anywhere in the world. And, uh, you know, to, to be able to travel and to, to tap into a community, um, to, to be able to carry on a conversation with people, you know, it could be a musical conversation or uh, it could be spoken, but um, it's a lovely thing to do. Well, I mean, do you think that... Um 
uh, I just, you know, you think about what your life would be without music, you know, and it just seems impossible to even imagine it. But again, uh, to to think about how, how did you happen? First of all, where did the Celtic music come from? Is that that's not Scottish, is it or is it? Um, it's partly Scottish. The the um, I think Celtic sort of covers five countries. The term Celtic covers five countries, being Scotland, Ireland, Wales, um, Galicia in Spain, and Brittany in France. And um, it's uh, the, the the Celtic music has um, it's been my my it's been there since I since I can remember. And the reason I say that is my parents uh, used to sort of play records in the background with Scottish music or Celtic music. And I really sincerely think that that's what started off. And, you know, as kids, we we would go to um, Cayleys on the west coast of Scotland. And a Cayley is a gathering in Scotland where a community would go and there would be music, song, dance, people talking. And, it, you know, it just it really, the music was was is the social glue and um in the communities in scotland it's really uh, coming to prevalence with music festivals on a lot of the islands of the west coast of scotland now and oh you know what a difference being on the the local ferry services and seeing people coming back from the festivals gosh this the, you can feel the energy and the, the, you know the, the, they have a lovely lovely experience well, you know, it's amazing because I really had not heard of Celtic music until maybe I think there's four or five women that play Celtic music that are on TV in America a lot. And uh, that's when I really first heard it. And I thought, this is really beautiful. And it's so melodious. I mean, it is so melodious. And um, then when I met you, I thought, this is, but I didn't see you with your fiddle. You didn't have your fiddle when I met you, and I had no idea that you were, you know, you played for somebody in the restaurant and so forth. So I can see where, where you know, doing your numbers work and, and doing the music, um, it, it brings out both sides of your life. And you have this program uh, that you call, you know, um, your creativity program, and I... Uh, how, what does that look like, creativity with discipline? What what does that, I mean, how do you present that? Um, creativity with discipline involves seeing where people are in their lives and um, if they want to uh, take up, uh, maybe they, they played music in in the past, or you know, maybe they're they're currently playing and and they want to um, have fun and they want to be able to join in a Celtic session anywhere in the world. There's a, a six month fiddle to freedom um, Celtic fiddle course which is beginning on the 14th of July, and um, through this we'll be um, taking people on their journey to just free up that creativity in their life to, to be a bit more spontaneous, uh, to be more in the moment and, um, you know, to surprise their families and work colleagues. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So what do you think a balanced life means for you? Oh, that is a very, very good question. Um, Make sure that uh, you, you you find something. Um, take time every day to enjoy life, and um, it could be perhaps uh, take ten minutes in a day, sit down and and let your mind wander. Find your favourite chair, or your favourite book, or listen to your favourite piece of music. Or if you play a musical instrument, have a practice for ten minutes a day, and. Um, Put in the calendar something that you'd really like to do each week, uh, perhaps take up a new hobby, go out with the family to the cinema, um, learn a new skill, or be slightly rebellious. And if you're outside or, you know, if you're in a shop or something, stop and listen to some music. 
and um, smile. And uh, it's okay to smile because when you smile, people think that you've been up to something. <laughs> well, you know, that's interesting because 